first performers today are the Melrose High School Honors Chorus under the direction of Kim Piper. Please welcome.
Juliana has played for us before when she was nine. She is now 11. And you will be on the
Wales at the time. Now, there was a provision provided at sea by a company run by a Mr. Weller. So if you were on board the ship as a crew, you welcomed the visit of the Weller man, who would bring tea, rum, sugar, sugar, butter, and sugar. The other thing I want to tell you is, the name of the boat is the Billy O'Tee. Does anybody remember what a Billy is? It's a can you cook. You, you boil water in it. So you have a Billy of coffee or a Billy of tea. This is a Billy of tea. And finally, what was the last thing? So if you will hear the word tummy, don't get any ideas. <laughs> it's, what has, it's what they call stripping the blubber from the whale. It's called tonguing it all.
Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here. Bye, Janet. It's nice seeing you See again. You, sir. you look good, girl. Just let me know what I can do to help. Well, to help me, she'd have to help every day. Every hour, every ouch, every time my wife calls for help. I mean, maybe she could help me make her lunch. But the crust, all the crust has to be cut off the corners. She could help me run to the doctor for the fifth time this week. Help me with the specialist and the second opinions and the painful paperwork about paperwork. Help me deal with how hard it is seeing my wife's name on so much paperwork. But this is on me. I'm the only one who can do this, like this, for her. Besides... Take care. We will. <laughs> Janet doesn't like her cooking anyway. Find support for your strength. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for care guides and community. One in three adults has pre-diabetes. One in three. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother, you, yes. your football buddy, your football buddy, you, the boss, the boss's boss. If one in three adults has pre-diabetes, that means it could be you, your barber, your barber's barber. Nice work. Thanks. Thanks. You, your plumber. Breathe right into your foot. Your plumber's masseuse. Yes. You, your dog walker. On your left. Your cat jogger. Or you, your co-pilot. Your co-pilot's co-pilot. While one in three adults has pre-diabetes, with early diagnosis, pre-diabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org to know where you stand. Guess what? I have some news for you. There's free food right there, junk food. Do you see that truck? <laughs> oh, jeez. It's a two Michelin star chef. All for free, ladies and gentlemen. All for free. Here we have a panzanella with summer vegetables and pesto. Enjoy. Okay. How are we doing? Fantastic. So what do you got going on underneath that plate there? This food is really about to be thrown away. Yeah. Really? Is there, is there something wrong with this food? Where did you get it from? From farmer's markets. They put aside the ugly vegetables and the ugly fruits. Yeah. Carrot top, soft avocados. It was all food that was going to be discarded. Even the drink you had is made from like a little bruised peach. Did it taste a little like bruised? Great. It was good. The average person throws away 24 pounds of food a month. That's a lot. Isn't that a lot? Go visit savethefood.com for more information. Thank you. Junk food time. Identity theft happens. It's an unfortunate fact of modern life. But there are certain steps you can take to help keep your personal information from falling into the wrong hands. Every day you do things to protect what's most important to you. And you know what? You do them almost automatically. Routine things like looking both ways before you cross, brushing your teeth, and buckling your seatbelt. Another routine to get into is keeping tabs on your identity and personal information. Here are five easy ways you can do it. Read your credit card and bank statements carefully and often. Know your payment due dates. If a bill doesn't show up when you expect it, look into it. Read the statements from your health insurance plan. Make sure the claims paid match the care you got. Shred any documents with personal and financial information. Review each of your three credit reports at least once a year. It's easy and it's free. And before you know it, protecting your personal information can be as routine as locking your doors at night. For more tips and tools on dealing with identity theft, visit ftc.gov slash ID theft. That's ftc.gov slash ID theft.
If you have a telephone, robocalls may be ruining your day. I'm Katie Daffin, an attorney at the Federal Trade Commission. If you answer the phone and hear a recorded message instead of a live person, it's a robocall. If the recording is a sales message and you haven't given your written permission to get calls from the company on the other end, the call is illegal, period. So when you get an illegal robocall, here's what to do. Hang up the phone. Don't press one to speak to a live operator and don't press any other number to get off the list. If you respond by pressing any number, it will probably just lead to more robocalls. You might consider contacting your phone provider and asking them to block the number and whether they charge for that service. Remember that telemarketers change caller ID information easily and often, so it might not be worth paying a fee to block a number that will change. Finally, contact the FTC to report your experience. You can do that online at ftc.gov or by calling 1-877-FTC-HELP. To learn more about illegal robocalls and what the FTC is doing to stop them, visit ftc.gov slash robocalls. That's ftc.gov slash robocalls. The internet, it offers enormous opportunities to communicate. Most of us, including kids, do all kinds of things online. We connect through email, text, and instant messaging. We post and distribute pictures and videos. We may have profiles on social networks where we share our lives, our plans, and our thoughts with hundreds of people. These ways of communicating and socializing can be convenient and fun, yet they come with certain risks. Many parents wonder, how should I talk to my kids about being safe online? A booklet called Netcetera provides some practical tips. It's based on the idea that the first step to protecting kids online is more about talking than technology. When kids want important information, they turn to their parents. So talk to them about your values, honesty, fairness, courtesy, or whatever values are most important in your family and how they apply in an online setting. By communicating your values and expectations, you'll help your kids make smarter, more thoughtful decisions when they face tricky situations online. Here are some things to talk about. Social networking sites, chat rooms, and blogs are some ways kids socialize online. They can help kids connect with friends, but it's important to help your children learn how to navigate these spaces safely. Among the pitfalls, Sharing too much information and posting pictures or video that can hurt someone's feelings or damage a reputation. Talk to your kids about applying good judgment to help minimize those pitfalls. Most mobile phones have cameras and can shoot video, making it easy for teens to capture and share every moment on the go. Encourage kids to think about their privacy and that of others before they share photos and videos. Cyberbullying is bullying that happens online, and it's a lose-lose proposition. It makes the person being harassed feel bad, and it makes the bully look bad. Talk to your kids about treating others with respect, and let them know they can talk to you if someone harasses them. If that happens, encourage your kids to block the bully if they can, and ignore him or her if they can't. That's because bullies are looking for a reaction. If it continues, Ask your kids to save the evidence and share it with you or another adult they trust. Mean behavior usually stops pretty quickly when someone speaks up. Encourage your kids to stand up for themselves and to stand up for someone else being cyberbullied. And talk to your kids about treating others online the same way they want to be treated. Here are some other tips to keep in mind. Start early. Young kids see their parents using smartphones and computers. So as soon as your kids use one themselves, it's time to talk to them about safety. Initiate conversations. Don't wait for kids to come to you. Use everyday chances to talk with them. News stories about cyberbullying, a storyline on TV, both can be the start of a good conversation. Be patient. Most kids need small bits of information repeated often for it to really sink in. Keep talking, 
chances are it'll pay off. Read Netcetera for more information about chatting with your kids about being safe online. It's free, and you'll find it at onguardonline.gov. Every day, you hear about scammers, hackers, and thieves trying to use the Internet to steal your money and your financial information. The fact is, you, me, we can foil many of their attempts. Every day we do things to make it tough for bad guys to break into our homes and our cars. We can make it tougher for them to break into our computers, too. Here are some ways to foil a hacker and protect your financial information. Install security software on your computer. Well-known companies offer plenty of free options. Set the software to update automatically so it can deal with any new security threats. While you're at it, set your operating system and web browser to update automatically too. If you're not sure how, use the help function and search for automatic updates. If you get a phone call, an email, a text, or a pop-up that says your computer has a virus or malware, don't buy the story or the security software they're selling. It could be a trick to get you to buy software that's worthless or even harmful. Treat your financial information like cash. It's a hot commodity. If someone asks for your financial information, say your social security, credit card, or bank account number, ask why they need it and how they're going to protect it. If you think you've found a good deal online, but you aren't familiar with the company, dig a little deeper. A quick internet search with the name of the company and the word review or complaint can reveal a lot. Always look for a physical address and phone number too. That way you know who to contact if there's a problem. Don't provide your personal or financial information unless the website you're on is secure. If the URL doesn't start with HTTPS, don't enter your financial information. That S stands for secure. It means the information you're sending is encrypted and protected. Make your passwords count. They should be at least 10 characters and a mix of numbers, letters, and special characters. Don't use your name, birth date, or common words. Don't use the same password for several accounts, as tempting as that may be. If it's stolen, hackers can use it to access your other accounts. Keep your passwords in a secure place and don't share them with anyone. Back up your computer files. For example, copy important files to an external hard drive on a regular basis. That way, if there's a problem with your computer, you won't lose everything. Life is online. Whether you live it using a smartphone, a tablet, a laptop, or a desktop, it's a good time to make computer security a habit. Find out more at OnGuardOnline.gov, the federal government site to help you be safe, secure, and responsible online. Shopping for a car? Applying for a job? Looking for a home? Or just getting your financial house in order? Then it's time to check your credit report. Good news, it's free. The law entitles you to one free copy of your credit report from each of the three nationwide credit reporting companies every 12 months. Why is it important to check your credit report? It has important information about your financial accounts, how you pay your bills, and if you file for bankruptcy. You want to make sure everything is accurate, especially before you buy a house or a car or apply for a job. If you notice something wrong, contact the credit reporting company and business providing the information to correct the error. And checking your report can help you guard against identity theft. Visit ftc.gov slash ID theft if you spot accounts that aren't yours. How do you order your free credit report? Order online from annualcreditreport.com.
the only authorized website for free credit reports or call 1-877-322-8228. You'll need to provide your name, address, social security number, and date of birth to verify your identity. Keep in mind, you're entitled to one free copy of your credit report every 12 months from each of the three nationwide credit reporting companies. So the next time someone asks, how's your credit? You'll have the answer. To order your free credit report, visit annualcreditreport.com or call 1-877-322-8228. Veterans, when you're struggling, soon becomes later, becomes someday, becomes when. Don't wait. Reach out. Find resources at va.gov reach.